Until the fall of 1957, the moon is Earth's only satellite, orbiting for eons in silent vigil. That October, the hush of space and America's sense of security is shattered by Sputnik. The sound of the Soviet satellite becomes eerily familiar to Americans. Fears escalate that the Cold War could heat up with catastrophic effect. Immediately everyone thought, well, they're now able to really send their, their military machines around the world up above who is not going to be in danger. President Eisenhower combined several agencies working on rocketry and flight to create one civilian agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Over the next years, the United States successfully launches satellites with great scientific payback. To prepare for human flight, several animals, including a chimpanzee named Ham, survive the ride to space and back. But once again, these American accomplishments are eclipsed by the Soviet space machine. April 12, 1961, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin becomes the first human in space. To temper this latest Soviet triumph, the U.S. needs to put its own man in space. That man is astronaut Alan Shepard. Shepard's flight had a tremendous impact. I think it was the leading technological accomplishment of that era and uh, led to the whole future of the exploration to the moon. Unlike Gagarin's 108-minute orbit of Earth, Shepard's suborbital flight, the nation's lone human venture into space, lasts just 15 minutes. This is a press conference. April 9, 1959, Washington, D.C. One of these seven young men will be the first American into space. These are the astronauts. The problem of selecting pilots to represent the United States in space was approached from the same uncompromising direction. From all of the active duty pilots in the Navy, Marines, and Air Force, the service records of 473 test pilots were selected for review. 110 met the basic qualifications. Each must be a graduate of a Navy or Air Force test pilot school, 1,500 hours of flight time, qualified in jet aircraft, an engineering background, younger than 40 at the time of selection, and 5 feet 11 or less. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration asked 69 Navy, Marine, and Air Force officers of the 110 who qualified to come to Washington for a briefing. They were interviewed, tested, and asked to volunteer for the Project Mercury mission. Six were discovered to be too tall. Sixteen declined. And 47 volunteered. Thirty-two were asked to continue through a series of capability tests which would indicate not the best man in the group, but the various degrees of qualification of each man. Thirty-two candidates reported to the Lovelace Clinic in Albuquerque, New Mexico for an exhaustive series of physical examinations. from this competitive purgatory as the Project Mercury astronauts. At McDonnell Aircraft, they saw a model of the space capsule they would ride into orbit. They sat in the cockpit for the first time. This is the beginning for each of them. Captain Donald K. Slayton, United States Air Force, age 35, from Sparta, Wisconsin. Lieutenant Commander Alan B. Shepard, United States Navy, age 35, from East Derry, New Hampshire. Lieutenant Commander Walter M. Shira, Jr., United States Navy, age 36, from Wardell, New Jersey. 
Captain Virgil I. Grissom, United States Air Force, age 33, from Mitchell, Indiana. Lieutenant Colonel John H. Glenn, United States Marine Corps, age 38, from New Concord, Ohio. Captain Leroy G. Cooper, Jr., United States Air Force, age 32, from Carbondale, Colorado. Lieutenant Malcolm Scott Carpenter, United States Navy, age 33, from Boulder, Colorado. Out of this training together, a strong esprit de corps developed. They all felt that this must be a team effort involving all of Project Mercury. To get the feel of space flight controls, this trainer at NASA's Lewis Research Center in Cleveland demonstrates the possible motions of a capsule in space. Off Wallops Island, Virginia, capsule drops at high altitude test the parachute and recovery system. These are the astronauts, United States Project Mercury. Godspeed, John Glenn. February 20th, 1962. John Glenn circumnavigates the Earth three times. The single most important factor was that man could survive and perform as well at zero gravity as he could at 1G. Zero G and I feel fine. By May 1963, the U.S. Mercury program flies six manned flights. But the last, Gordon Cooper's 34-hour solo mission, still leaves the moon out of America's reach. Project Mercury, to orbit a manned spacecraft around Earth, to investigate man's ability to function in space, to recover both man and spacecraft safely. With these straightforward goals, Project Mercury launched the United States into the space age, spanning nearly five years from 1958 to 1963. Project Mercury achieved such history-making firsts as the first American in space, Alan B. Shepard, Jr., and the first American to orbit the Earth, John H. Glenn, Jr. Selected from over 500 applicants, these seven exceptional men became America's heroes for all time. Alone in their tiny capsules, the Mercury astronauts stood proudly on the shoulders of more than two million individuals, from NASA scientists to government and aerospace industry workers who strove to make spaceflight a reality. <laughs>